Welcome back, episode two of the Great White Sharks in a British Waters series. Today, shark attacks, British Waters, encounters, uh, some of them are just ludicrous, honestly. Uh, however, in my documentary, I did misinform you guys and tell you that there had never been a shark attack on record. How wrong was I? First things first, I'm not a marine biologist. I'm not a shark expert. I'm just a guy who's pretty tired of watching Shark Week and there never being anything about British waters. So, taking things into my own hands. Attacks and counters are often misunderstood. I love sharks. Um, I'm not here to demonize sharks. Sharks are awesome. I haven't made any of this up. This is all from scientific databases. Uh, there's links below, but I'll just tell you which ones they are. So, ISAF or International Shark Attack File, which is based out of Florida Museum. Uh, it's regarded as uh, one of the only scientific comprehensive databases of shark attacks. Uh, it's initiated in 1958, and I believe they've carried out investigations from the early 1500s. Uh, then we've got the sharkattackdata.com, uh, GSAF, Global Shark Attack File, uh, Shark Research Institute. I did reach out to uh, the Sharks Trust here in the UK, uh, but however, they never responded. Some of you might be wondering, we don't even have sharks in the UK, certainly not big ones. You're going to find out we do. Uh, and that is going to be episode three in the series. However, for now, I'll just skim over them, all right, with a picture of them. So we've got the short fin Mako shark. We have the Paw Beagle, which is like a mini great white. We've got the Thresher Shark, Blue Shark, Smooth Hammerheads, Basking Sharks, uh, among others, okay? So you'll see some of these come up in the video today. If you look at the uh, shark attack data uh, for the United Kingdom, it shows something like 37 incidents. However, 16 or, or so of those uh, are classed as unprovoked, which is what I'm interested in. Uh, if you get nailed by a shark trying to bring them on board fishing, that's kind of a different story. Uh, I'm not judging, by the way. However, what, what is interesting is if you look at the list of global attacks on the international shark attack file, it only shows three. Uh, now, that still puts us ahead of the likes of Cayman, which blows my mind because I spent a lot of time there and there was loads of tigers around there. I never saw any, but I had friends who did. And also uh, the Maldives, where I have been, Indian Ocean, and it was sharks galore, mostly black tips, oceanic white tips, but loads of sharks, yet the UK is, oh, they also have tiger sharks there, but the UK is categorized as more attacks than there. Absolutely blows my mind. Let's just have a quick look at some of the uh, information about shark attacks in 2020 in general. So 2020 stats from uh, International Shark Attack File. There's 129 attacks, 57 unprovoked and 39 provoked. You know, people fishing, trying to bring them on board a kayak or chasing them. So although attacks in 2020 had fallen, uh, possibly due to COVID, less people in the sea, uh, unprovoked, there was 64 in 2019, 66 in 2018, and obviously the 57 in 2020. However, there was actually a spike in fatalities. Uh, there was more deaths in 2020, there was 10 deaths globally by great whites, mostly in America and Australia and St. Martin, I believe. So they were on the increase. Uh, if you look at what the victims were up to at the time of the attacks, 61% were surfing or board sports. Uh, I'm no surfer, but I, I do go out paddle boarding regularly. Uh, swimming or wading, 26%. Snorkeling or free diving, 4%. I mean, I imagine if you're spearfishing and you had a fish on, you know, it definitely interests the sharks. Uh, body surfing, horseplay. And 4% uh, scuba. I mean, it's not unlikely scuba divers anyway because they're normally quite a bit below her. Below, we know sharks like to attack bottom up. Certainly the great whites do. In 2016, December 2016, Chris Mills, 36 years old, uh, was windsurfing in Felixstowe, Suffolk, when his board was attacked by a shark and bitten. 
Uh, now, from what I can understand, I believe he was knocked off his board, uh, but nothing else. Shark didn't um, charge him again. Just hit his board. He's seen enough to know it was a shark and uh, no injuries. Right, 2011, Spey Bay, Moray, Scotland. Sorry if I've uh, butchered that one. Uh, Andrew Rolio, 26 years old, was surfing when a 12 foot shark uh, bumped his leg and his board. This occurred in October 2011. So again, another one near the winter. Believe the 12 foot shark was a poor beagle. However, not confirmed. 2017, now this one was picked up in the papers. Rich Thompson, uh, a surfer, was surfing uh, off the South Devon coast near Bantham when a three foot long creature swam alongside his surfboard and bit him in the leg. Uh, he told the BBC he was minding his own business when he felt this thing grab his leg. He said, I sort of turned around thinking it was one of my friends creeping up, messing around with me. And he looked down and he said, there was a, it was only three foot long. <laughs> Like I say, not all of these are massive sharks. Gnawing on his thigh. It also bit him on the thumb uh, and left a bit of a graze on his hand. Again, species unconfirmed. Thoughts were that it was a juvenile mako. If you know more, by the way, about these, these incidents, please comment below. Now this one is not really a shark attack, but it's, uh, it was an encounter. The worst shark related fatality in British waters occurred in 1937. In the late morning of September the 1st, in the Kilbrannan Sound off Carradale on the Kintyre Peninsula, steamship captain Angus Brown took members of his family out for a pleasure trip on an eagle, which is like a, a wooden rowing boat, basking shark, which is a large toothless fish that would normally present no danger to man. Uh, could be seen all around the bay. I mean, I live in a basking shark hotspot here on the Isle of Man, and uh, we certainly don't get that many anymore. Uh, it's thought that one of these creatures, which can grow up to 26 feet, 8 metres, collided with a boat, capsizing it. Uh, in the confusion, Captain Brown and his 10-year-old son and another unnamed family member uh, all drowned. Uh, the triple fatality is likely to remain the single worst fatality in British waters. Uh, on August the 4th, 1960, 25-year-old uh, William Capel was working on a fishing boat in the English Channel off Devon when he was helping an angler land an 80-pound shark. Uh, the, the panicked an animal twisted and bit him on the arm. In a last de desperate attempt to free himself, the shark snapped at my arm. Capel said, I felt the shark's teeth crunch down to the bone and as he pulled away, he took quite a lot of my arm with him. Uh, I believe this is thought to be a uh, poor beagle. But again, 1960s, people weren't rocking around with camera phones like we are today, so there was no photos of the event. This is another quite interesting one. <laughs> it's called the Shark Torpedo. Some of you probably know about this, but it was absolute news to me, to tell you. Right. So in 1956, two men were killed after an encounter with a shark off the Lizard in Cornwall. Uh, full disclosure, this shark never bit them. Uh, it wasn't quite the classic shark attack you might expect. Uh, Richard Kirby and Leslie Nye were both civilian seamen, um, providing support to divers operating from HMS Burley. After a sizable shark was spotted near the ship, diving officer Lieutenant Commander Brooks led an expedition on a small boat to scare the shark away. Uh, the plan was to throw boxes of TNT overboard. You know I'm going with this, don't you? Near the Predator, in the hope that the explosions would drive it away. <laughs> Unfortunately, the boxes of explosives were thrown a little too close to the shark. A rope binding two boxes together snagged on its dorsal fin. I mean, what are the chances? Uh, while it was swimming away, which might have been fine had the creature decided to not turn around and make its way back to the, to the boat turning itself into a torpedo. Uh, Commander Jay Bailey of HMS Burley told the coroner at the time, it was very good shot. Anyway, uh, the boat started to turn away from the shark, but the shark turned around, made for the boat, and as it was directly underneath, both charges exploded. 
I mean, if you haven't heard of the Darwin Awards, that is a fine candidate for stupidity. It serves them right, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be harming these animals. Like I say, I'm trying to focus on unprovoked incidents. 1971, B-Sands, Devon. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, 32 years old, uh, was spear fishing when he was charged by a 3.6 to 4 meter paw beagle. It's a very accurate description, fair play. Uh, he pushed it away with his lobster hook. I believe that the paw beagle turned, charged at him again, but he managed to get himself out of the water before this point. Yeah, poor beagles aren't known to be this aggressive, so, I mean, these are very rare occurrences. Not much information about this one. June 1968, Roy Clark had his arm lacerated by a blue shark. Now, these things are proper docile, so, again, pretty amazing. This one, this one I'm uh, hoping to get some assistance on with you guys. So, in 1996, uh, there was attack, an attack in the North Sea. It was a short fin mako, and I believe it happened around an oil rig. Uh, I don't know how serious the injuries are. I don't know what happened, whether it was a scuba diver, perhaps. Um, I mean, my father-in-law was a commercial uh, diver who worked on oil rigs, welding, etc. And he's, you know, he's seen a lot of sharks in his time, but certainly never been attacked. So, uh, yeah, if you know anything more about this one, please uh, comment below or get in touch on Instagram, whatever. I'd like to fill everybody in on that. There's a, there's a fisherman who was uh, bitten on the foot in 2012 and another one bitten in 2018 by a poor beagle. However, they were catching the poor beagle and trying to bring them on board. So it's a provoked attack, really. Uh, one damaged the foot, chewed through his steel toey cap and the other one there uh, bit through the boat I believe. Uh, the killer tiger shark of Brighton Bay and we're going back to 1735, 1785. Uh, on a warm afternoon in Brighton Beach a man decided to uh, venture into the water. Uh, he'd not been in long before a shark charged at him. Uh, the man ran back to the beach where a large tiger shark plunged after him with the violence that forced itself entirely out of the water onto the beach. The animal with no power of retreating got stuck. The man gathered fellow beach goers who hacked it to death with axes. That's just savage, mate. Back in 1700s, they didn't have Wikipedia, Google, anything like that. So, I mean, take this with a pinch of salt. So they opened its stomach and the letter said, the entire head of a man was found in it. No otherwise altered other than being soft and pappy and the flesh and scalp entirely separated from the bone on touching it. Uh, the stomach was half an inch thick and the shark was 12 feet long from head to its tail. Uh, they threw the shark back into the channel, so no one's going to corroborate this account. However, it was convincing enough for The Times, which uh, started publication under its original title, Daily Universe Register, a few months early, to offer a handy guide to people who have never seen sharks. So, I mean, if they printed it, they, who knows, it had something of interest. Could it have been a tiger shark? Because of the so-called stripy skin? It's probably very, very unlikely. Uh, let's face it, tiger sharks live in tropical warm seas, uh, not Brighton Beach or the British waters. That is a shark I really don't think we're gonna see uh, in our lifetime in these waters. Again, bringing it right back here, but it's on record. 1812 in Mill Bay, Devon, a soldier was bitten on both legs by a mako or a poor beagle. That's all we've got on that one. So 13th of September, 2001, uh, I wonder was it a Friday? Uh, a diver at Blue Planet Aquarium, Ellesmere Port, Cheshire, had his head bitten by a 12 foot sand tiger shark. Head bitten, was it a nip? Did he take his head off? Who knows? <laughs> August, 2002 at Blue Planet Aquarium, same place. Uh, Rob Bennett, 30 year old, uh, was bitten by a three meter captive sand tiger. Was it the same one? You think, you'd think they'd learn, wouldn't you? All right, this one here, it's not really an attack, but it is an encounter. Uh, 
Ellie B commented on a, a post I read. Do forgive me, I cannot remember where it was. And it said, four years ago, my husband was rushed by a shark when he was spear fishing off Portland Bill. Uh, he's had two incidents to date. Uh, one rushed him in bad visibility and appeared inches in front of his face and then scarpered. And the other was a shark rushing him in good visibility, uh, trying to take a cod from his spear and then returned about six times to rush him again after he'd taken the fish. I mean, taking a cod from a spear, that's not really an attack, but these were poor beagles, poor beagle sharks. Well, I do hope you've all enjoyed this episode uh, in the shark series. Like I say, I'm not a marine biologist. Don't be getting a sad on if I've got anything factually incorrect. I've just read the data as it is on the interweb. Uh, anyone else who's got any more information who wants to add to it, you know, I've had some great people contact me through uh, the other videos, uh, including some absolutely awesome footage of a poor beagle getting pulled alongside a boat. I mean, that I'll show you that in a future video, which uh, I've never seen anything like it. I, I thought it was a great white. Um, and this only happened in July this year. So cheers, Graham, for sending that over. Uh, so yeah, what a community. Everybody uh, who's interested in sharks here, you know, it's fantastic. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. I don't bang saucepans at the moon. I'm not out there looking for Bigfoot. Uh, but sharks have always interested me. As I said in previous videos, I've had some big shark encounters and it's just, it's like fuel to the fire for me. See you in episode three, uh, which is about sharks in British waters. Uh, a lot of you guys, you're way more uh, switched on than me about this. You already know this, but hopefully somebody learns something and, uh, you know, spikes some interest. The channel's grown well with this sort of thing. Uh, I have had some people offer to send me uh, underwater drones, uh, which are thousands of pounds, which I have said yes to, of course. Uh, so I'm waiting for that to come to something. And, uh, you know, the dream is it would be, it'd be great to do another one of those shark expeditions that happened a few years ago. I think it was knocked off for uh, bad weather. Around Cornwall area, you know, up in Scotland, chumming the waters, uh, essentially cage diving, towing things to see if anything comes for them. Uh, I mean, that, that would be mega. Even if they never found anything, it would be good to do it. I am uh, developing, I say developing, I am knocking together a little trolling thing for the back of my kayak so I can tow a GoPro uh, underwater. Uh, it's, it's a bit dodgy. I'm waiting for a mate of mine who's an engineer to work out his fluid dynamic stuff, in which case probably go back to the drawing board after he sees my... Uh, catastrophe but the plan is to um, tow, tow it and that be towing uh, something I'm going to make like a chum uh, in a, like a tiny bag almost like a tea bag but underwater and uh, chum it and see what comes uh, might just be mackerel but hey got, got to do it for the adventure anyway that's enough waffling from me appreciate all of you for viewing and uh, stay tuned stay tuned for the next stuff see you guys bye